Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and you read that right. We're looking at googly eyes today. And I know that might seem extremely simple, a little silly for a video, but I think it's actually gonna make a pretty fascinating video for a couple of reasons. First of all, I mean, who doesn't love googly eyes? They are actually very powerful. Think about it, you can stick googly eyes on anything and suddenly it's interesting. Got a boring old toaster? Stick some eyes on there, and now, it's a very interesting introspective toaster. I mean, what's it thinking? What's going on in there? <laughs> Bored of your old phone? Stick some googly eyes on there and suddenly it's the talk of the town. What the heck? Stick some eyes on a roll of toilet paper and suddenly you've got a conversation piece. Ooh. Yeah, googly eyes are powerful. Beyond just making anything more fun, googly eyes are actually a very interesting product to look at because they're so darn simple, but there's actually a lot going on and it was a bit of a challenge for me to 3D print them. So first let's take a look at your average googly eye. These things have been around for years and years and you certainly wouldn't think much of it, but if you take a close look, it's actually a bit of an engineering marvel. We've got a clear bubble, we've got an adhesive backing. There's this loose pupil that bounces around on the inside. If someone handed you one of these and asked you to make a machine that can just pump these out thousands in an hour, I bet you'd have some trouble. I would, I know I would. These googly eyes have been around forever now. I mean, can you imagine life before googly eyes? Imperceivable. But when it comes to 3D printing these, it's a whole new challenge. At least with the most common 3D printers, like all the FDM machines I have down in the garage, it's not easy, for one thing, to print a clear bubble like this, to put a loose object inside, and to just make it this tiny. When I finally decided to take this on, I knew I had to take a different approach. And uh, based on that, what was it? The little bouncy puck thing that I made in the past for uh, that Matter Hackers Plinko? That thing kind of started my mind going way back then about how I could do a googly eye. Because basically it has that center disc that stays upright no matter which way it is. And a googly eye is kind of the other way around. The outside circle is gonna be mostly stationary while the inner circle is supposed to bounce around. So uh, the way this works is pretty much the same. Here's my deconstructed googly eye and you can see it's actually three parts. These two parts snap together and basically it's just a little hinge. But it was really not easy to come up with this little hinge because, well, for one thing, printing little parts like this is not easy. And then making all the tolerances perfect, well, it came down to fractions of a millimeter. I actually had to print a lot of different prototypes to get this to work and actually swing around loosely and be a good googly eye. It's easier to see what's going on if we take a look at the Fusion 360 file. Here you can see these little tabs and it was a real balancing act trying to make them thin enough so that they'd bend out of the way make them small enough that they didn't show on the other side and just make them sturdy enough so they wouldn't break off. On the pupil part, you can see the pin here. It's got this angle so that it clips into place, but we also wanted to print without support material and you'll notice this area is hollowed out and that's so that it's weighted near the bottom so that the eye will follow gravity. 
And I also added that little dimple at the bottom, which acts as a little spacer, so it reduces the amount of surface contact between these two parts, which also helped make the eye as googly as possible. Anyways, snap those two parts together and you've got a googly eye, although there is still the exposed hinge on the back, so I figured why not put a back cover that snaps into place. It'll cover that little exposed back part and you can add some outlines and some eyelashes and things like that. I kind of wanted to upgrade the googly eye, you know. If we're gonna be 3D printing, you gotta step it up a notch. In fact, once I had all that done, I decided to step it up another notch and I, I wanted to make these human-shaped googly eyes with colorful irises. And this was actually fun. I used my multi-pass printing technique where I printed several colors as individual prints without removing the previous print so that they kind of print on top of each other and turn into a multicolor part. And with this one, uh, the iris actually has two slanted parts and one of them gets thinner while the other one gets thicker, moving towards the outside of the iris, you know? And that, I was hoping, would give me a nice gradation from one color to the other, given that one of the colors, at least, is kind of transparent. This first one I did with the translucent aqua filament that Matter Hackers makes. It's a lovely transparent blue. So I printed that, and then I used Poly Alchemy's shiny uh, green elixir PLA that's super metallic and shiny, and I printed that behind the translucent blue, and that gave me these eyes here. And you can see it kind of worked. There's a pretty good gradient. It created a whole new color. This is really not representative of either of those two filaments that I stuck together. So that's pretty interesting. And then from there, I wanted to make something more vibrant. So I used the neon yellow transparent filament that uh, Matter Hackers also makes. And I put another polyalchemy elixir filament, the blue, behind this one. And that created this kind of glowing eyeball. It's really cool. After that, I went a little bit evil. I did a transparent red on top of yellow, and that gave me these kind of eye of Sauron type evil, rah, evil eyes. And finally, I once again went back to that transparent aqua blue that I love, and I put some of Filamentum's Voodoo Wizard PLA behind that. And that's just an absolutely stunning filament that changes color based on the angle between this metallic blue and purple. And I think it might actually look better on its own, but it still did make for these nice, dark, deep, mysterious eyes here. Very cool. Yeah, so that's what I came up with. Uh, I'm really happy with how it works, especially these slightly larger googly eyes. They're super googly. I can't wait to stick these on pretty much every printer of mine as well as everything else, just everything. Googly eyes make everything better. Go download them at myminifactory.com. Now, I'll put most of these online for free. I'll put links in the description. If you wanna buy all of them, I'll put those in one big pack that you can buy on My Mini Factory for two bucks. I hope you think it's a great deal for making everything in your life better, I think it's a pretty good deal. Anyways, that's as far as I've taken it this week. I'm really proud with how these came out. I'm gonna keep printing them and sticking them on everything. I wanna hear from you guys. If, if you were to redesign the googly eye the way I did, would you take a different approach? How would you do it? Because I'm sure there's other interesting ways to do this. And what would be your next level? It's fun to take a look at simple little things like this and especially to redesign them. I mean, it really goes back to that idea that everything in the world around us has been designed. Something as simple and silly as a googly eye, believe it or not, it was someone's job to perfect that and do it really well. All right, well, I'll see you guys next time. Leave a comment if you got something interesting to say. If you wanna see more videos like this, or if you just want me to be happy, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and don't forget, to stay inspired. <laughs> I bet that's really creepy. I'm sorry.